then my question is manas is included in hierarchy of these five elements or not so i seek evidence uh, in chapter 224 there is similarity in, in expression uh, manas whose nature is manifest for example byakta atomaka manaha so and waters whose nature is taste apo apo raso atomika ha rasa atomika ha so the chapter 234, unfortunately chapter 224, itself does not give any further hints to the problem and it seems that he does not consider so much. But chapter 224 has a suggestive passage. 224 is the account of dissolution whose order is approximately the reverse of the creation account in chapter 224. In the dissolution of this world, the movable and the immovable first dissolve into earth then water takes earth's property that is smell and earth dissolves in this way light takes away the property water that is taste and wind that of light you see this this process is the very opposite of the uh, production of the five elements given in chart one then the text continues uh, then just a little skip and akasha segnanshaptam abibyakta atmakammanaha when ether divorces the property even of wind that is touch, then blah blah blah, the manas, the next page, uh, which is the manifest in nature, divorces sound the property of ether. Then the unmanifest Brahman here neuter divorces the property of manas that is the manifest. This is the dissolution into Brahman neuter. So 10c is pertinent to our concern. Considering the sentence structure of 9ab, that was the Bayora Pignan Sparshan Akashan Grasateyada. So this 10c, not 10cd, sorry, this is typo. Uh, 10cd can be reconstructed as follows. So the square bracket indicates the supplied words. So Manaso Kudan Piaktam Abiaktam Grasate. So Manaso genitive. Uh, property, accusative, and biaktam, in opposition to gunam, mm. that and abiaktam, I interpret it as, as nominative, because brahma, brahma is neuter, and it's or, it, it, brahma neuter is said to be abiakta in other passages, and grasate the war, so the unmanifest war is the property of manas that is the manifest. So the reconstruct reading of the 10 CD justifies the inclusion of manas into the hierarchy of the five elements and the interpretation of the manifest as the property of manas. So we have already seen that the property of the prior entity persists in the posterior entities. Then Byakte is the property that is common to the five elements, that is, I'm not sure about this point, but manifestedness or perceptiveness. For, remember that Patanjali Yoga Shastra 2.19 also designates buddhi as satta mantra, so mere the existence. So I'm not, cor I'm not yet uh, studied this well about Patanjali Yoga Shastra and you know in the Patanjali's Mahabhashya that the, uh, the satta is seem to be the Mahasamanya uh, of the of everything. So it seems that this is a kind of forerunner of this sort. And chat two is the revised version of the chat one. And the next three point four are continuity and innovation. So sections three point two one to two have shown that this account of creation has borrowed the idea of manas as the first evolute of the crea creator from very just creation account. Manas primarily functions as the creator's will to create this world. The account creation the account of creation in these chapters owes its basic structure to its Vedic Speculation. So, as the process of creation comes to take a fixed check, there occurs a further inquiry into the causal relationship among it, the elements. The five elements which comes into being after manas is the first target for this inquiry. The prior entities have the generic properties that are shared by posterior entities. You see that the Akasha's property, Shabda, is hmm? Shabda's uh, Akasha's property that is Shabda is observed in all the other five elements. 
and the posterior entities give birth to new properties that are not observed in the prior entities. The process of origination is, in a way, the increase of the number of less generic properties. This view forces such cardiac doctrine of the later classical Sankhya. According to the doctrine, transformation of the prior entity to the posterior one is differentiation, classification of generic property in the prior one, and consequently the production of spe specific properties in posterior entities. The account of creation in these chapters is one of the forerunners of the doctrine in that it offers explanation of the order of the creation process in terms of properties and their specification <coughs> or gradation of the genericness. The gradation of specificity of the five elements is further applied to Manas. As Manas has already obtained the status of the, five the first elements, Manas is super added to the hierarchy of the five elements. So, next page. So, as a consequence, a Manas comes to be qualified in a different way. In Vedic creation accounts, for example, in the Shatapada Brahman passage, Manas is qualified as the manifest or and the unmanifest in the sense of primordial chaotic state, pregnant with the science of the manifestation of this world. The account of creation in these chapters, on the other hand, reinterprets the meaning of manifestedness, and Manas, as the first evolution from the Creator, is interpreted as possessing the property that all the subsequent entities have in common. So manifestedness or perceptibility as the most generic property is regarded as the property of Manas. And I think that this the qualification of Manas as the manifest is very important because uh, among the early Sankhya sources, uh, there are mainly three accounts that has only Manas as the spiritual entity. And uh, their, specific, their qualification is all different in these three accounts. For example, in the Manava Dharma Shastra, it is said Sata Sata Tamaka. But uh, in this chapter, it is uh, Sat means in this context, Vyakta, that Vyakta, Vyakta. But uh, in other chapter, that Mahabharata 12, 175, it is just called Abhyakta. And here it is called Vyakta. So it seems that there are some wavering qualification of the manas in early Sankhya philosophies. And I'm com considering comparing these. Uh, Differences, this qualification of ma manas as manifest should be very important, and there, I think this is clear. So, the concluding remarks uh, in this presentation, relying on Hakka, I have first shown that manas is the only spiritual entity involved in the creation in this chapter 254. In section 3, I further demonstrated that the concept of Manas as the first Everett can be regarded as Janus faces in the history of Sankhya philosophy, which bridge between the past and the future. Uh, the account of this basic structure, the Vedic precedence, in that Manas represents the desire or impulse of the creator to create this world, and that Manas bears similar adjectives, sata, sata, vyakta, vyakta, abhivyakta. So, but at the same time, the account in Chapter 224 to 225 offers a reinterpretation of the property of Manas in terms of causality and property. So Manas as the first evolute from the creator possesses the property that exists in all the subsequent entities. Thus, the manifestedness that is property of Manas is reinterpreted as the most generic property. Finally, I would like to make a comment on the importance of the study of the Mahabharata in understanding of creation theories in Sankhya philosophies. So, a recent study by Bari tries to provide a consistent interpretation of the creation theory within the framework of classical Sankhya, Sankhya yoga and associates creation theories with metaphysics and soteriology. So, his approach is very fascinating and indeed reveals many aspects of consistency in the system of the Sankhya yoga. But a synchronic approach is not enough to reveal its entirety. As my study suggests, uh, Sankhya creation theories are historical products, and various elements of different historical backgrounds are packed together in them. So, this being the nature of Sankhya creation cuts, are historical or diachronical approach is also important for deeper understanding. So, that is all for my talk. Thank you so for listening.